for the first time in the history of independent India, probably any government acknowledged that bioeconomy is going to be the largest or probably one of the largest employment generators of the future. And that is why they have come up with the bio E3 policy. Today in this video, we are going to discuss how this impacts you as a student, as a bioprofessional and as an entrepreneur or whatever role you might be playing in the bioeconomy. But before I get to the bio E3, let me congratulate uh, the government for coming up with such pol policies in the first place because biotech is just a dot and if they care about a dot, then definitely they would must be taking care of bigger industries. But this dot has a potential. This dot is going to grow into a massive mammoth, which will be probably a thousand billion dollar industry in the near future. But having said that, this acknowledgement itself is a big thing that biotech is going to be an employment generator of the future. So what exactly is bio E3 uh, policy? We are looking going to look into that. But before that, some news for you. You must have already uh, read on the new, in the mainstream media that the union cabinet chaired by the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has approved the Bio E3. India's cabinet chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently approved the Bio E3 policy for India's biotechnology sector. Policy is aimed at fostering high performance bio manufacturing by the Department of Biotechnology, which is which we also know as DP. Right? So now let's look at what Bio E3 is all about and how we can we as Bioprofessionals can take the benefit or get the benefit from this. So the government has highlighted certain um, aspects. The government has clearly highlighted certain parts of biotechnology industry, which is going to contribute towards other uh, industries also. And of course, in general, towards the growth of the economy also. Now, some of them is biochemicals, um, bioenzymes and biopolymers. Followed by that, they have also highlighted the role of smart proteins and functional foods because our agricultural uh, economy is, uh, you know, the population is booming and the agricultural economy is not able to keep pace. So of course, these kind of foods will be required. Precision biotherapeutics such as uh, on gene therapy for sickle cell anemia or oncotherapies, gene therapy. So all these uh, comes under biotherapeutics, uh, precision biotherapeutics. Followed by that, for the agriculture, of course, we have biofertilizers and biopesticides and then biofuels and biochemicals. For example, uh, devices to capture CO2, CO2 from the environment and then they have also highlighted the importance of marine research and space research. So possibly government is going to invest a lot of money through its funding bodies such as SERB, BIRAC into companies which are targeted towards any of these six key focus areas which I have outlined just now. But now let us talk about how exactly it is going to contribute towards economy, environment and you as an employment. Basically what and historically what government has done is once they have a list, okay, these are the key focus areas we are going to look at. So it will identify startups which are working in these areas. And if they are doing something tangible via BIRAC and via other funding bodies or even if in fact in a lot of research grants will go in towards these uh, research, right? So if you are a company or you, um, if they identified you as a company which is doing research in any of these six fields, they will handpick you, they'll give you funding. Now that funding can be anywhere in between 10 lakh rupees, it can go up to say one and a half, two crores also. Sometimes even tens and uh, hundreds of crores also depends on how it is. And they also arrange for cheaper loans for the biotech industry. Now what happens when this happens? Obviously, the key focus area is bio manufacturing. So this time the government is more focused on the manufacturing side because they realized that India is a services economy. It's not a manufacturing economy yet or a product based economy yet. So they are focusing more on bio manufacturing. And that is where, you know, more people like you will get employed because you're going to do the manufacturing, right? Robotics cannot still be used in biotech. So more of employment will be generated when biomanufacturing will be encouraged and government is going to grant funding. So this is one very good news for all of you, all of us. Now coming to the next aspect. So how exactly it will con contribute towards the economy is of course when we will ex start exporting these products abroad, right? So more foreign exchange will come into India. And if that has to happen, then more hands has to be there in the factory so that we can generate more products. And that is where employment generation comes into picture. And next will be environment. So if you follow the news closely, then India has committed in G20 and various other places. We'll try to reduce our carbon emissions by 
uh, several percentages in by 2050, right? When it comes to that, obviously, if we want to reduce the carbon emission, there are multiple ways. One is to plant more trees, which of course we are doing, but also capturing carbon from the atmosphere, right? And once we capture, then we can use that captured carbon or methane or something. We can use it in various various other things like biofertilizer. So that is another aspect where government is focusing. So whatever commitment it has given to the world that we will try to reduce our carbon emissions, biotechnology will come into picture to help government, right? So that is a very promising step towards the growth of biotech industry. Of course, more funding will flow towards the biotech entrepreneurs. This will lead to more manufacturing facilities. This will lead to more gen employment for all of you who are studying biotech or who are in the biotech sector. And this will further translate into more export of biotech products across the globe. And that means, of course, more foreign exchange coming in that contributes to the economy. It's a very simple way how they have planned it. But now coming to the first aspect is we all have to also, now that government has also come up uh, with their policy, we also have to go forward. If you want to start a biotech company, reach out to me, I'll help you out. Then go and apply for these fundings from Biorec and various other, various other bodies and then start your company and generate employment, give jobs to so many people. And if you are, uh, you know, of course, looking for a job, Biotechnica is always there to help you. But my point here is, if you want to start a company, then these five, six key areas are very important. Number one, biochemicals, bioenzymes, biopolymers. Number two, smart proteins and functional foods. Number three, precision biotherapeutics. Number four, biofertilizers and biopesticide. Number five, biofuels and biochemicals. And number six is marine and space research, bioresearch, right? So these are the six areas where you can pursue your, your research and get in. But mind you, in this, they have not mentioned anything about bioinformatics and AIML because those are basically accelerators of these uh, five or six fields. So obviously it gets included by the way. But yeah, this is where my point of view comes into picture is we have to be cautiously optimistic about the bioeconomy. See, we are getting there, but at the same time, we also have to make sure that uh, we have regulations which is friendly to the biotech entrepreneurs. We have to also make sure that more funding and easy access to funding, whether it is equity or debt, should be available to biotech entrepreneurs. And at the same time, there should be steps taken like we have now Bangalore, India Bio or Global India Bio, which is happening next month in Delhi. These kind of events, more such events should be happening so that we can put brand India on the global map. And at the same time, we have to encourage those entrepreneurs who are going to scale up their manufacturing facilities because they will be the real employment generators. And this is what uh, is my point of view. Now, as a bio professional, it definitely impacts you because now that the policy is here, more funding will flow into the biotech sector, more jobs will be created, and then you will be placed. So all the best, keep shining. And if you have any questions, any comments, anything you would like to share, maybe you have a different point of view about this policy rather than what I said, maybe it's a contrary uh, point of view. Feel free to put that down in the comment section so that we can have a healthy debate and we can come up with some great conclusions. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next one. Until then, keep shining. Take care. Bye-bye.